making sure you guys are raising your hand when you guys have a question, which is great. All right, again, you guys need your artwork book and something to draw with. If you guys don't have those things, a blank sheet of paper like this will work just as fine. So this is what I did last class. We'll be working on something quite similar to this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is why don't we see what we did last time we had art? So last time we had art, we went over, um, oh, wrong one. We went over geometric shapes. So last week we talked about the two differences of geometric and organic shapes. So we did that by going over um, 2D shapes and then turning those 2D shapes into 3D shapes. And then we made our own variations of organic, freeform, and natural shapes, like seen over here. Now, what we're gonna do today is flip over to the next page. The next page should look something like this. So flip to this page right now. It should say, I can learn space. Okay, so I'll wait a couple seconds. Flip to this page right here. All right, I'm gonna talk about every single one of these in detail and slowly. That way you guys can understand what's going on, okay? All right, if you guys did not know, space is one of the seven elements of art. And it says here, Space is the visual and physical space within an artwork. Artists create space in a variety of ways. So what are those ways? Let's talk about each and every one of them. One way to create space is to draw big. So this one's a big drawing in the square. Another way to how to use space is filling the whole paper. So if you just fill every single part of the paper with some part of the drawing, that's a way how to use space. The next one, the third one, lines going off the paper. That's another way how to use space. And then let's talk about four more. The placement in the relation to the horizon line. Raise your hand if you don't know what a horizon line is. Really, you guys know what a horizon line is? All right, great. I'm glad you guys don't know because I did not talk about it. Horizon line, is basically the line that is created when the land meets the sky. I'll repeat that one more time. A horizon line is when the land meets the sky in the picture. So now you guys know what a horizon line is? It could be like when people draw water or when people draw like land or hills. It's basically when the land meets the sky. That's called the horizon line. So that's one way how to use space. This next one, I highlighted it because we're gonna be using it for our example for the next page. This next example is called going smaller in the distance and getting larger as it gets close up. Next one, darker close up, lighter further away. This next one's very easy to understand. This one we've done before. This one is called overlapping. That's when objects or things are either behind or in front of each other. That's called overlapping. All right, I did highlight this next one. I can just go over it real quick because we're gonna be doing it anyways. So basically stuff that's near you on a picture is called the foreground. Stuff in a picture that's in the middle is called the middle ground. Basically stuff that's like not too far away, but not too close. And last but not least stuff that's very far away in the picture Mo uh, mainly on the top of the picture is called the background. All right, with that said, let's flip the page. It's gonna say space again. And again, if you don't have a uh, this worksheet or this page in particular, a blank sheet of paper works just as fine. That's why I just did last week, or sorry, I did this uh, last class. So if you don't have this worksheet, just draw a house and then a horizon line in the back of it. All right, and if you do have this worksheet, let's just do it together. All right, it says I can learn space, and it says in this little chunk right here, it says in art, objects that are near are drawn large and closer to the bottom of the page. Objects that are far are drawn small and closer to the top of the page. Not quite to the top, I'll explain why, but Close to the top of the page so it gets smaller. So let's do the first one first. It says to draw something near. So draw one object near. Before you do that, we're gonna use the example of a tree, okay? So if I were you, I'm gonna take a, a drawing utensil. So in my case, I'll do a marker. So you guys can see it better on camera. So I'm gonna draw a tree trunk. 
And then I'm going to draw the top of the tree. Oh, it looks like I'm going off the page a little bit. It's OK. So this object is near because it's large and it's drawn towards the bottom of the page. See, it started at the bottom and it's large. So now we can tell that this is something that's near us. Next step, it says draw objects that are far away too. Draw one object far. So if you look in this top sentence over here, it says objects that are far are drawn small and closer to the top of the page. If I draw too far to the top, it's going to be floating in the air. So you can't do that. So the closest I can go to the top is right here in the horizon line. So if I have to draw small, I'm going to draw a mini tree trunk right here. So if you guys want to follow along, go ahead. Mini tree trunk. And then a mini top of the tree. Like that. All right, I'm going to pause real quick. I'll let you guys catch up. And while you guys are catching up, I will color in a couple parts here. I don't want to go too fast for you guys. All right, just by doing these two trees, I did a couple things related to the previous page. I'm going to detach my previous page just so I can take a look. And I'll put this one beside it. All right, look at what I just did. I drew big, so I did that part. Over here, it says fill the whole paper. I didn't do that yet, but it's getting there. Do I have lines off the paper? The answer is yes. The first tree I did has lines off the paper. So I could do that. I've done that to show space. Placement in the relation to the horizon line, it says right here. And I did that because I drew a tree on the horizon line, that small tree. And specifically, I definitely did this next one. Smaller in distance, larger close up, as seen from the trees. All right, let's talk about the next one. Darker close up and lighter further away. I did not do that. Overlapping, I'll do that in a little bit, so I did not do that yet either. But look at this very last one. Foreground, middle ground, and background. The answer is yes, I did that as well. If I look in the picture right here, this big tree would be considered the foreground. The house would be considered the midground or the middle ground. And this small tree right here would be considered the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this one up right here. I'm going to hold it as best I can. And I'm going to try to make sure I have more things that apply to space. So what I'm going to do, maybe I'll add some more things getting a little smaller in distance and larger close up. Maybe I'll add a pathway from the door. But when I draw the pathway from the door, it's going to go wider. So it gets smaller in distance and larger close up. It's shown by this pathway. So the pathway gets a lot wider. Another thing I can do is maybe draw some hills. Like this. Maybe one hill right there. Another hill over here. And what I just did just then, without even thinking about it, I did some overlapping. Overlapping is when something's either in front or behind something. And I just did that with the hill. So I could check that box off if I really wanted to. If I want, maybe I could do some clouds. So I will do some clouds with this. So maybe I can do the lines off the page, where it says lines off the paper. Maybe I can do something like that. Maybe I'll do some behind the hill. That way I can check off the overlapping box again. And maybe if I want, because I have a lot of space, empty space right here, I can add maybe a lake or something. And maybe some more clouds right here. All right, what just happened just now is that I completed my picture and now I can finally check off this one. Fill the whole paper. And that was the second um, example of space. So we just did a couple of these. If you want to color the whole thing, you can. If you are, if you do decide to color, you can kind of do this one. Darker close up and lighter further away. You could do that if you want to. But basically, I think we went over all the different types of space when it comes to second grade. I don't think we talk about positive and negative space 
in this grade. We'll talk about that next year. All right, so while you guys are working on that, I can leave this up on your screen for a tad bit longer. Uh, and then I will move the camera a little bit. We still have three minutes left. If you're done early, you can hold yours up if you want so everyone can see it. If not, that's okay. Oh, nice picture, guys. Nice. Good job. Nice. If Miss Hardigan or Mrs. Navi were here, they would show you the good job sticker. <laughs> Mr. Mill, I'm using this color for um the house. Awesome, possum. Awesome. Mr. Mill, we have to go in the house. No, nope, you don't have to. Mr. Mill. Yes. Is there gonna be a winter break come November? Oh, uh, we don't. Hi, Mr. Mill. Winter break's not normally until December, and it goes into January. But oh, in November, okay. there's normally a Thanksgiving break. Okay. No problem. Hello. All right. Um, what I'm going to do right now, um, I'm, I'm still here with you guys. I'm going to stop the recording so I don't forget. I'm going to make sure it goes to my box.